Hello everybody, I'm Gwen Campbell Mendez. Welcome to Gwen's Bookish Ramblings and the last of the Harper Hall of Pern trilogy. Um, so you see that there are two people on the cover of the omnibus because we have Manoli who with her nine fire lizards and all the drama and whatnot and a boy and that is the previously mentioned Pimir the uh, kid who was probably about 10 years old when Manoli first arrives at the uh, Harper Hall. And he's one of the people who helped get her through that first week, that first several period of time at the Hall, simply because he's willing to be her friend and he is super interested in fire lizards and he gets into everything and everywhere and um so this book this last of the trilogy is actually about him so we talk when we first meet Pamir in dragon singer uh he is about 10 years old he is a harper apprentice but the big thing about him is that the reason he got brought to the Harper Hall was because he had a boy's soprano voice that was beyond compare. He was, uh, you know, it, it's it's that thing with the young boys who have these really, really amazing high-pitched voices. And so Pimir has one of those. And the problem with boys with high sopranos like that, of course, is they get older and their voices break and crack and they stop being able to sing that high anymore. And Pimur realizes almost immediately when his voice breaks and finally just goes that he doesn't really have anything else for the hall, that he was there, that he sight reads better than anybody else, but that he can't, that, that he doesn't have anything better than indifferent skill with, uh, with other instruments. He isn't good at building instruments. He's basically, the reason he's at the hall is the voice that he doesn't have anymore. And it's a problem. Uh, and so... He gets called in to see the Master Harper, who basically tells Pimir that he's going to take him on as the Master Harper's apprentice to do something that I had mentioned in an earlier book, and that is Harpers disseminate information. Harpers do a lot of things, but part of how they get information to disseminate, part of how they figure out what needs doing, part of how Master Harper Robinton works the system to make the political changes that he wants is he uses his harpers as spies and you know not just he has people stationed in every hold because every hold needs a teacher for the kids and needs somebody there to provide entertainment on long dull evenings but because he sends his harpers out to go undercover in the second book one of the things Sibel asks Manoli is, can you teach me how to appear to be a sailor? Can you teach me how to do, how to work on a boat, how to seem like somebody who is from a sea hold? And Pimur has been, has been brought in, in effect, to act as somebody who's smart and quick and puts things together, puts ideas together. And it's it's something that he demonstrates almost immediately when he takes a whole bunch of disparate information about what Robinton is up to, about things that he's seen around, and puts together basically incredibly quickly what it is Robinton is doing, what's going on politically, and so on. And he is, he impresses Robinton, uh, and Manoli looks at the Master Harper and says, I told you, I told you he's this good. And so Pimir gets told to base, he gets sent up to the drum heights, and here is one of the other things that Harpers do. The thing about being in a pre-industrial society is 
Long distance communication is extremely limited. Yes, they have dragons, but the fact is that dragons, they're kind of like the army that you don't ask the army to carry your messages. I mean, sure, if you've got somebody there who's going to be going to some place you want to have a message taken to, you might prevail upon them to do you a favor and bring it with. But dragons are not mail service. And if you want to get a message somewhere quickly, one of the ways you can do that without having to physically send somebody all the way across the landscape and thus risk that person risk getting caught out in thread is drums. They have a network of drums all over where basically what you do is you have these extremely loud drums that can send a message in effect to people very, very, two people within sort of the range of hearing the drums who can then relay that message onward. And so it's a very specific sub area that requires specific training in in doing the drums, in doing the drumming, in memorizing all of the codes for the messages, in knowing those right off the top of your head so as to be able to just take those down and then run a message to somebody. And so Pimir gets sent up there and he gets blamed for everything. And as he thinks later in the book, it's because he's got something of a troublemaker's reputation because he is the kind of kid who gets into trouble because he's the kind of really, really smart kid who does things to entertain himself, in effect. And people start blaming him, among other things, for rumors spreading. And what's super interesting, of course, is that as he thinks Riley, every single Master Harper in the hall knows what those messages mean, and a fair few of the journeymen. So what you're basically saying is a drum message comes in and, like... If 25% of the people in any given place can understand the incoming message, uh, that means that rumors are going to spread because everybody understands it. Drum messages are not something that you send because you want it to be super private. You know, everybody along the path of that message is going to know the message and is going to be relaying it. It's you know, it's it's not something that you do because you expect to be quiet, but they blame it, Pimir for rumors that start about highly sensitive messages. Anyways, Pimir has a lot of trouble because he's lost his place. He's in this new place. Nobody likes him. Everybody's causing him trouble. And he keeps getting pulled out because the Master Harper wants Pimir to do what is in effect spycraft for him. And that's fine, but it just makes his life even harder on the drum heights. And so this is really a book, this is again a book about somebody figuring out what's going on. But in Manoli's case, she's, you know, had never felt like she had a place that nobody at the Seahold thought that she should be doing music, that they didn't really have a a specific place to assign her an area that was all hers. Whereas Pimur is in a very different position in that he had a place and he knew what he was doing and where he was going and how he fit. And when his voice goes away, he is left spinning his wheels. He doesn't know quite what to do with himself. He doesn't quite know how to handle it. And the Harper Hall doesn't quite know how to handle it. Which, frankly, I think is, you know, speaks poorly of everybody. Because somebody should have thought ahead when Pimir first arrived because the only thing he was there for was his voice. Um, so, that's something. Um, anyways, in the end, Pimir sort of finds his way and and makes it out. But he has a bunch of side adventures and things because Pimir you know with Manoli music is everything but with Pimir it's it's more that 
there was only one thing that was his thing musically. And so, in a lot of ways, he's he's less at the Harper Hall. Uh, you know, he's at the Harper Hall because of external factors, whereas Manoli is at the Harper Hall because there's nowhere else for her. Um, whereas Pimir, you know, if he'd found his way to the Master Smiths, he would have he would have wound up you know doing his own thing and being just as successful there as anywhere else he would have had to be somewhere intellectually stimulating but uh you know music is not his life despite the whole thing with his voice so he's a very very different person from Manoli and it makes the whole how this whole book goes very very different from Manoli's because he's not like Pimur ultimately is very very self-confident that he has a moment of being shaken when you know sort of just that moment of I don't know what to do next but he's somebody who who comes out of things fine because he he knows what he can do and sets himself to doing things and does them successfully and it's it's very, very different. Um, and this isn't my favorite of the three. Uh, I think in no small part because, uh, again, Manoli is, is searching for, you, you know, acceptance uh, um, and so on. Whereas Pimir's cockiness, it's, it's not quite as appealing. That said, of course, I feel like there is a certain amount of misunderstanding from everybody because Pimir, you know, turns to the Master Harper at one point and slyly tells him that, you know, this would all go easier if I had a fire lizard, and he gets treated as though that's getting ambitions above his station, and it feels to me a little bit more like you know, they don't understand that what Pimir wants is he wants an adorable pet that loves him and cares for him and that he can snuggle with and call George. Um, whereas they read that as ambition, and Pimir is many things, but ambitious actually never feels like one of them. You know, he's somebody who wants to do things and go places and see stuff and not be bored, but that's a very different thing from having ambition. Um, and I think drive without ambition is kind of where you've got is where you've got uh, Pimir. He has things that he wants, but he doesn't want massive personal success or, or other such things. It's a difficult line to to really describe anyways um but no i it's the the one thing that throws me most in this though is the shift in minoli because in the first two books she is so very very unsure of herself and this book literally jumps like three four years past the end of dragon singer and so when when we see her she is a highly confident and competent journeyman and we don't get to see that transition, which is one of those things that I feel I would have liked. I, I would have liked something somewhere along the way to give us those three years of transition, and we don't get it. And it may be that, that Anne McCaffrey filled it in in some hole somewhere in one of the books that I didn't read, um, because there are books in the series that I didn't read, uh, but it's it's just this this book is kind of a jarring it's kind of a jarring transition and so it's not quite my favorite of the three it's very very enjoyable you root for Pimir the whole time but it's I don't know there's just something about it that throws me off I guess uh could be the shift in protagonist could be the shift in the sort of protagonist I don't know but that's all I have to say, and uh, I will see you all next week.